So today's episode, we're going to talk about the considerations with your pension plan if you're leaving your employer. My name is Regan Schiller, and I'm the host of Your Canadian Retirement Specialist. So this channel is truly dedicated on providing Canadians with valuable content around mostly all things retirement planning related. Now, if you haven't hit that like and subscribe button, please go ahead and do so. And if you want to get uh, you know, a better look at our practice, stick around to the end where I'll give you a, a bit of a description on our masterclass. So typically speaking, there are three options to choose from when members of a defined benefit pension plan have the option to commute their pensions. Option one is that you would take the pension and commence monthly payments on a date allowed by the plan, usually somewhere in the age of 55 to 65. Second option would be that you could transfer the pension to a commuted value to another registered pension plan. So that is, of course, if the new employer's plan permits a transfer. And the third option is that you can transfer the pension's commuted value to a locked in account where the commuted value of a defined benefit pension plan represents the percentage value of the lifetime pension payments as calculated under the plan's benefits formula. This benefit is usually comprised of an amount that can be transferred to a locked in account or a locked in registered account. And this is typically under provincial or federal pension legislations and this is gonna take place on a tax deferred basis. However, there will also be an excess amount in, in that transfer that is subject to immediate taxation. So let's review option one and option two when you're considering leaving your uh, pension, your employer. So let's talk about pension options. So things to think about is, is there a reduction of pension benefit in the payment once the payments start prior to the normal retirement date? Is the pension indexed to inflation before and after retirement? If so, is there a cap on the annual pension increase? What is the amount of the pension benefit that will be paid to the surviving spouse? Does the plan provide for a guaranteed period where the remaining monthly pension payments in the period will be made to the estate or beneficiaries if the plan member and spouse dies? And if so, how long is that guarantee, guaranteed period? Does the plan provide a bridging benefit? So for example, a, supplement, a supplemental pension uh, paid only till age 65. Is the pension plan in a significant deficit position that could create a significant risk to the client if the sponsor, if you will, becomes bankrupt? Are the benefits that will be stopped if the pension option is not elected? So if so, what would it cost you to fund these benefits independently? So this would be things like group life, extended health care, dental, vision care plans, etc. And are there health concerns that could shorten one's life expectancy? So let's talk about some of the advantages. Well, retirement benefits are guaranteed for life. So pensions may provide inflation protection with indexations, possible bridging benefits and enhanced survive, survivor benefits. So there's no investment risk or investment decisions on your behalf. Payments from the pension plan are eligible for pension income splitting at any age. I hope you're enjoying the content of this episode. And once again, if you hadn't hit that like and subscribe button, please go ahead and do so now. As well, if you have questions or topics that you'd like us to do um, an, an episode on, please, by all means, go ahead and put in the comment section below and we'll be sure to do our best to, to address that if for an upcoming video. So let's review some disadvantages. Well, first off, the payment amounts cannot be increased or decreased. The payments, uh, they could also be less than the actuarial value of the benefit earned if normal life expectancy is not attained. This is a big one. There is no estate value. So when you and your spouse pass away, if that was the case, there's no value to the estate um, contribution or there'll be no contribution to your estate from the pension plan. And finally, there's no investment control. So let's look at the third option. So you transfer the commuted value to a locked in account. Some points of consideration would be, does the commuted value have an excess amount that would be subject to immediate taxation? And if that is the case, do you have room in your RRSP carry forward room to shelter some of this amount? What is the required minimum rate of return to produce a sustainable payment from the investment assets that would be equal to the retirement income of the pension options that were provided? What asset mix is reasonable to generate this minimum rate of return? And is this consistent with your risk tolerance? What other current uh, and post retirement income sources do you have available to yourself? And is reemployment, which could delay the start of withdrawals, would this be a point of consideration? Now, let's review some of the advantages of taking the commuted value. Well, you're gonna have control on those investments. 
You'll have flexibility when payments can start and the amount of payments, potential for enhanced estate value, and you're gonna have potentially the option to unlock 50% of the assets and convert that into a registered retirement savings plan, ultimately creating more flexibility in your plan. As well, you could convert it to a life annuity at any time. Now, on the flip side, the disadvantages, well, long-term investment performance of the locked-in assets, it could be lower than anticipated and therefore payment amounts are not guaranteed. Significant portions of the transferred assets may be subject to immediate taxation. Future payments from the life, uh, life income fund, so the LIF, are subject to a maximum annual payout restriction, so a little bit less flexibility. Payments from the LIF or LRIF or PRIF will not be eligible for pension income splitting until age 65. Other employer benefits such as group life and health coverage may be discontinued. So as well, there is certain types of risks that we must uh, address. So first we're gonna look at mortality risk. Mortality risk is the possibility that an individual and the surviving spouse, if applicable, will not live to the anticipated life expectancy. So this means the total pension payments could be less than the actuarial value of the benefit earned by the plan member under the pension plan. So in a locked in registered account or a LIRA, a LIF, PRIF or LRIF, mortality risk is not an issue as the full value of the LIRA, LIF, uh, PRIF or LRIF is payable to the beneficiary or estate at death. It is possible to provide a hedge against mortality risk when selecting a pension option by purchasing a last to die life insurance policy, which will provide a tax-free lump sum benefit to the beneficiaries of the surviving spouse. Mortality risk can also be mitigated if the pension provides a guaranteed period. Then we would have sustainability risk. The sustainability of the investment assets is a factor to be considered with respects to the transfer options. The higher the annual payout given an assumed investment return, the higher the risk that the invested assets will be depleted during the client's lifetime. The sequence of investment returns is also an important consideration. During the accumulation phase, it does not matter that the returns will be higher in some years and lower in others. It's almost a given. And provided that the long-term rate of return is equal to or exceeds the assumed rate of return. However, when regular payments start, the sequence of returns becomes more important. Investment losses in the first few years of the payment period could result in a higher risk of depleting the retirement assets. And finally, investment risk. Investment risk is the possibility that if the transfer option is chosen, the long-term investment performance of a locked-in asset might be lower than anticipated. So investment risk is not a factor with respects to the pension option, as the payouts are guaranteed and they may be indexed. So as you can see, there's many factors to consider when deciding whether to keep the pension options or transfer the community value. So it's important to evaluate both uh, the advantages and disadvantages as they relate to your personal uh, situation and your financial goals. Well, that wraps up this episode. I hope you found the content and the information useful and informative. And as well, in the description below, we have our masterclass link. So basically what this is gonna give you, it's it's about an hour long in length, um, but it's a basically just kind of you know pulling the curtains back and letting you see our operations on the backside and how we interact with our clients, the type of planning we do, and things of that nature. As well, at the end of that uh, video, if you will, there's a opportunity for you to apply to become a client. And as always, thank you for watching your Canadian Retirement Specialist.